All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. And we just want to just welcome you to our online broadcast and worship experience. We thank God for you showing up today. We don't believe it's by chance that you are here. But we believe that there'll be something that'll be shared that'll be a blessing to your life. And so we just want to welcome everybody in. On behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel, and myself, <clears throat> we just want to say welcome to everybody. Hey, guys, I'm so excited. For all of our first-timers that's coming in, thank you so much for tuning in. We want to recognize you. We want to let you know that we just love you and appreciate you. Um, I know sometimes we like anonymity. We don't want anybody to know that we're just kind of popping in, popping out things of that nature with everything going on. We know other people may come in maybe from their church services onto our broadcast or vice versa. And so we just want to just recognize you and just love on you and just tell you how much we thank God for you showing up. We don't take it lightly that you're listening and you're tuning in to us today. So we do believe, though, that a word from God will be ministered that's going to transform and change your life. And so, y'all, this is Palm Sunday, and uh, we're excited about it. <laughs> just thinking about the triumphal entry of Jesus and, you know, preparing himself for the cross. And so there's so much significance in this week leading up um, to what we call Resurrection Sunday. And God has been dealing with me about some stuff. And so last week we started a, a series talking about the Lord of the breakthrough. And before I tell you what we're going to deal with today in continuation of that series, and <laughs> I mean, it was just so much that God has just given me and lined up. Um, as I was going over this stuff, man, over my notes and everything, I'm expecting the power to hit. I'm, I'm just telling you, I'm just being straight up honest with you that God is going to share something with you today. The Holy Spirit is going to reveal something to you that's going to transform and change your life forever. And I want you to go ahead and be ready to receive. I want you to go ahead. If you got to get your breakfast, your juices, all of those things, go ahead and, and lock it in. Get your family around to worship with you. Your children need to hear this just as much as you need to hear this. Um, I think this is going to be very important. Um, and then you can have conversation about it. I think that's important, too, to really not just, you know, so many times, you know, we're coming to a worship service and leave out. And, you know, we go in and we have a great time. And then when we come out, are we really transformed and changed? Or has, has the process started of transformation and change for the better to be conformed into the image and the likeness of Christ? And so today, um, <laughs> we're going to talk about destroying the walls of containment. Things that have held you bound, whatever blockages that have been in your way. I'm, as, I'm already sensing it. A strong anointing is going to manifest. And I'm telling you now, it's coming on me already. I'm, I'm so ready to get into this. God has been doing something within me personally. I don't know about anybody else, but he's working in me. I'm falling in love with Jesus all over again. He's taking me back to my first love. And I begin to think about just the times in his presence and in and just, you know, the power of God coming upon my life, even as a young man. And tears will begin to stream down my eyes. And I'm trying to, I'm getting ahead of myself, but <laughs> I'm just telling you, y'all, it's, it's just so good. God is so good. And Satan will try to destroy what God has started and planted in your life. And if nobody else believes in you, I believe in you. We believe in you. And we're expecting the goodness of God to manifest in your life now. So we, we got our staff here with us. Listen, we tell everybody, everybody, all Spirit of Fire partners, supporters, friends, listen, if you see that they're not logged on, call them, text them, let them know. Pastor say, log on now. Now. <laughs> this is a call, not just from me, but from the Spirit of God. We're going to yank that. De Boy, I'm telling you, I sense the presence of God and the power of God where Satan will. Listen, you cannot be defeated for one split second. It is time for you to come out of inconsistency into a land of consistency consistency, stability, and growth. This is going to be your new day. As I was looking over this, I was like, man, this almost probably should have been my, my, my Easter resurrection Sunday message. 
But I'm like, man, we're going to start something today. I'm praying that the spirit of God would light a fire in you and that the spirit of fire would hit your life. And that the power and the presence of God would transform and will change you. Let's enter now, right now. Let's enter to the holies of holies through prayer. Father, we thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely today. Uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak to my vocal cords. Think through my mind. Let great wisdom and revelation and impartation take place. Not just information, but impartation by way of revelation so that transformation can take place. I pray over each and every individual under the sound of my voice, whether they're live, whether they are be looking at the replay, whatever, that their ears are anointed to hear and that hearts are open, ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. And Father, we covet the gifts of the Spirit to be in operation and demonstration. We covet the gifts of the Spirit, the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits. Father, we thank you right now for the gift of faith, gifts of healings and working of miracles. Signs and wonders will take place. Deliverance will take place. Even because there is no distance in the Spirit that the people in their homes, in their cars, as they're driving, listening, or well, by, if they're sitting in front of a computer, wherever they are, on their devices, on their televisions, wherever they are, let them sense the tangible anointing to remove every burden and to destroy every yoke. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. And we give you the honor for it now. In Jesus' mighty holy and majestic name that we do pray, praise, and give thanks. And the people say, amen and amen. Man, I wish you guys were even here with us. I'm, I'm just, oh, I miss being able to just hug on people, love on them. But we're going to strategize and we're going to come together soon. We're coming together. We're coming together. God is real, man, I'm telling you. God has really been dealing with me about some things. I'm expecting an explosion of God's grace, favor, and mercy like you've never seen. I'm expecting to see, oh man, I'm telling you an explosion of his goodness that is unprecedented. I mean to tell you God is about to expose, rearrange, change, set, listen, he's... <laughs> is already a finished work It's already a done thing and we're going to see this but i need your expectation now. i need y'all to get involved with me the spirit of god says i want you to begin to bring this prophetic ministry to the forefront more and so it doesn't mean i put aside the teaching anointing but now as i begin to teach even from a prophetic standpoint not only are you going to begin to see things that i'm not only preaching to you but I'm speaking to that devil, that enemy that's trying to attach to your life in any way, shape, fashion, or form. From your children, to your marriage, to your finances, your health, your mind, I don't care what it is. The power is present to heal, to set free, and to deliver. Let's jump into this now. The other week, the Spirit of God began to um, talk to me about the Lord of the breakthrough or the God of the breakthrough. And one of the things um, he began to, to just talk to me, and last week we began to talk about limitless faith. And as we begin to talk about limitless faith, God started taking me through a progression of things. And he says, I want you to go from there to talk about destroying the walls of containment. And then I'm going to go into developing the highest level of faith that you can develop. And so we're going to start talking about these things. And so here, now I want to begin to read to you out of the book of Mark chapter 7. We're going to start there. The book of Mark chapter 7. And in this message of destroying the walls of containment, for some of you it's, it's been like there's been this invisible fence, this invisible wall that is holding you back from moving forward. It's like whenever you try to take two steps forward, it seems like in some cases you go five steps back. Whatever it is, I'm talking to that person right now. 
It's some of you that may have been feeling like, you know what? There's, it's like, I keep going in cycles. I keep going in cycles. This is this bad cycle that keeps going in my life that has me in the same place that I was two years ago, three years ago. And every time I try to break free, it seems like I come right back to the thing that I try to get rid of. I'm talking to you today. I'm talking to the person that's like, you know what? You are ready to enter into the fullness of what God has for you. I'm talking to you today. And so I want you to get your pen, your pads, whatever, your device is ready. I want you to take good notes, but not just what I'm saying, but what you're hearing. What is the Holy Spirit saying to you as this word goes forth? Because I'm believing that God will confirm his word with signs following. And so let's jump into this. In the book of Mark chapter 7, verses 5 through 9, and it reads here, it says, when, Then the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why walk, not thy, um, why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashing hands? He answered and said unto them, Well, hath Isaiah, or Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Now look at Jesus here. Jesus, Jesus was a bad boy, man. He was... I think sometimes we think of this loving God from the standpoint of that there was no confrontation in him. And one of the things he began to say was, listen, he called them hypocrites from the jump. He says this. He says, the people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. A lot of people do that. We talk about God. We talk about his word. We talk about how great he is. We talk about his promises. We talk about his principles. We talk about, yeah, Lord, I'll serve you all the days of my life. But there are many people who serve God with lip service, but then their heart is really not into what they're saying. And this is why people don't always believe what you say, but they do believe what you do. And they believe your actions and your actions do speak louder than your words. And so we have to now begin to think, am I being hypocritical in my life by declaring one thing, but living another. He says this, how be it, verse seven, how be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. He watched this, so they teach his doctrine the commandments of men. It's not my word, but they're talking about man's opinion, okay? For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, full well you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your own tradition. This is powerful. You reject God's word. You reject the way he says to do it just so that you can keep the way that you've always done things, the way you've always believed things, the way you've always felt about things. When the will of God is known, listen, all argument ceases. So if you see that God says to do it a certain way, you no longer hold on to the way that you've always done it if it opposes the way he says to do it. If he says to love, then you just love. If he says to repent, then you just repent. If he says to give, then you just give and then do it with the right attitude. If he says now bless your enemies, no matter how you feel about it, it is still now the requirement of God for you to now, when I say the requirement, yes, he has commanded us to demonstrate his love, just like Jesus has loved us, so are we to love others. And so sometimes what we'll do is we'll hold on to our feelings, our emotions. You know, God says submit, but you say I'm bucking authority. God says you do this, but now you say, you know what? I don't care what God says. I'm just, I don't feel like it. I don't want to do it. He says, listen, you, you're going to make the word of God of no effect. Therefore, it says this in Mark 7 and 13. Now, this is in the Amplified Version. As we go down a few verses, he says, thus you are nullifying and making void and of no effect the authority, the authority of the word of God through your tradition, which you in turn hand on. So now you pass it on to others, but now you are voiding, it's void of power, it's void of authority, because now you just determine you want to do it your way, and many things of this kind you are doing. 
So now according to verse nine, you will put limits on God by your own human regulations or traditions. So he says, you nullify the word of God. You make it of no effect. The authority behind, that's why your words carry no weight is because you say one thing, but do another. And so even though nobody else may even know in some cases, but God knows, and this is why, see, this is, this is interesting because we're going to begin to see why has containment been there? Why have things not worked? Why have things, uh, listen, not come to pass? We got to dig deep. And this is what the spirit of God is saying. I am digging deep now into my people because I told you I'm not coming back for a church that has spot or wrinkle. And so I'm going to iron out the wrinkles. I'm going to remove the blemishes, the spots, and I'm coming back for my bride. And so what Jesus is doing now is he is now ministering to us as the church to remove things that have blocked the fullness of his grace from manifesting in our lives. And so now he says this, I want you to begin to experience the life more abundant that you've always believed for. But now I'm going to start digging and hitting things because the word of God is sharper than any two edged sword, piercing to the dividing of sunder of soul and spirit. And listen, it says this is a, it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. That's in Hebrews four and 12. And so we got to understand this. We got to understand that when God's word enters into our hearts, it will begin to transform and begin to change us. Now watch this. Now, one of the first things I want to attack, I want to tackle here is you will limit God's power from manifesting or working in your life through an unbelieving and world ruled mindset. You will limit God's power from manifesting in your life or working in your life through an unbelieving and a world ruled mindset. You see, you won't see the supernatural if you don't believe it. You won't see God's intervention in some things if you're not even looking for it. And God could be working because he got other people praying for you, but you don't acknowledge him. And you don't recognize that God, that's you at work in my life. And so even as we begin to talk about the supernatural, because I'm going to start, I'm going to get ready to deal with some, some things that the spirit of God spoke to me at the end of last year, even where this ministry was concerned. And so he said, and then he began to tell me, I want you to start teaching in line with the prophetic word that I gave you. I want you to begin to now teach in alignment with those things to develop this culture of faith because we started out that God wants to build this limitless faith culture in this ministry and in the earth and the body of Christ. That's why this word is for us spirit of fire, but it's also for the body of Christ as a whole. Because we are here, part of our motto is, listen, our motto here is changing the culture, igniting a passion, and then ultimately living a dream. So God wants to manifest his grace in you, his, his love, his kindness in you, but we got to receive it. Now, I want to go ahead and get ready to dig into this thing now. The Spirit of God spoke to me. And one of the things that he said concerning not only this year, but just this new culture and environment, he says he wants to show us unusual signs, unusual miracles, signs, and wonders in these last days. Unusual miracles, signs, and wonders are going to begin to manifest. And so you got to go ahead and get ready to receive it. Now, as I begin to study and to bring this thing out, he began to show me some things. The definition of signs, miracles, and wonders. Number one, a sign. What's a sign? A sign is an indication. It's a signal. It's a symptom. It is, it's, it's like a hint. It points. It's a suggestion, manifestation, or demonstration of something. There are indicators in your life that he's saying that you have not recognized that have been signals, indicators, signs, manifestations, demonstrations of things that I have been at work in your life. And a lot of times your faith has not been to the point that it needs to be is one of the reasons because you haven't even realized or acknowledged or begin to thank him for what has already been at work in your life. And so now you will limit the manifestation of more 
through the fact that you are not even grateful for what has already happened and taken place. You, and I get it. Sometimes what's happening is you want the ultimate thing, the, the end result to take place, but you're not even thankful for the progress that you've already made. And God is saying this, if you're not thankful or grateful for what's already being done in your life, then you will cause yourself to be stagnant and stay at a place where you are no longer moving forward because he says you are not even grateful for what I've already done for you. And so now you are so complaining, it will cause a murmuring or a complaining spirit or attitude to come up. And then you will watch this. When murmuring takes place, you open up your mouth and speak against what God is already doing. And the minute you start doing that, it shuts down his power from manifesting even more. If, listen, I'm telling you, God was dealing with me about this yesterday. I was just, I was at a basketball game with my son and there were some things that I was seeing. It was like, oh man, I was getting frustrated. And the Holy Ghost, I was telling my wife about it last night. The Holy Ghost started dealing with me though. He said, don't you open up your mouth and speak anything negative against the progress that your son is even making. Don't you open up your mouth. And so what I, my flesh wanted to just say, man, what's going on? What's happening? Blah, blah, blah. And I mean, I'm sitting there pouting, like with an attitude, arms folded, the whole nine. And God, he dealt with me. He's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And now watch this, because you realize the power of your words. And if you keep speaking negative about a situation, you are only enforcing that thing to remain in your life. And if you don't watch it, you, oh man, God, woo, you will curse your son and not even realize it. Because you got to understand, see, you know, oh, here we go. Lord Jesus, we can, oh, Jesus. If you don't watch what you say, and you speak negative. That's what it means to curse, to speak negatively about something. And it releases a force that will work against you and cause you to remain in that place that you're currently in because you're saying what you have versus having what you say, but you're still having what you say because you're still speaking in alignment with what you currently see. And see God's listen, faith works like this. Say what you're believing for. Speak what you're believing to manifest in your life. This is one of the ways you come out of stagnation and come out of containment. This is how God showed it to me. He said people got a, a he, they have a, an invisible fence around them. Now, now I'm getting ahead of myself. They got an invisible fence around them because watch this. They already free, but don't know it yet. Don't acknowledge it. The walls have come down, but because it's, 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 it's like that, y'all know the, um, it's, it's, it's an experiment where you, um, the crabs in the barrel or whatever, not the crabs, but it was like you put a container on something and it was like the animal tries to, to keep jumping. They keep hitting that, that ceiling. You can remove it and all of a sudden they'll never, they're already free, but they'll never jump out of that container because they've been so conditioned that every time they jumped, they would hit that ceiling. So it conditioned them to think that the ceiling was still there, even though it was removed. That's what God is saying. You have already been made free, but you were so conditioned because you've been so long in the situation that you don't realize you've already been freed and delivered. And you just need to step on out and do the thing that I told you to do. And that's when you're going to begin to see. And what God is doing is he is showing you things. He is pointing you in the right direction. And he says, all you need to do is follow the signs, follow the promptings of the spirit, follow what I'm telling you to do. And you'll come out of that place of containment into the land you've always been called to come into. Number two, miracles, miracles, miracles are by definition, supernatural phenomenon. It's a mystery. It is, it's, it's it's when the super, I like, I like my definition like this. When the supernatural gets involved in the natural order of things to accomplish God's will. When the supernatural invades the natural order of things to accomplish God's will. Now, even your body is really designed to heal itself. But when a miracle takes place and divine healing takes place, 
God's super, his power, the anointing comes upon your physical body to accelerate what already is. Mm. Oh, no, because I just heard something. In other words, the healing is outworking the sickness. And it's so in alignment where it's producing that it will flush out and begin to obliterate and wipe out the thing that's attacking your body. When the power of God is in manifestation, and he said there are going to be more miracles that take place. But you know what the greatest thing is to not even have the need of a miracle to begin with, but if you need one. He said the miracle working power is going to be manifesting to change or rearrange things in your life at an unprecedented rate. I'm, 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 um, okay. Teach it, Mike, teach it. Cause if you see what I see, cause I got to say what I'm seeing, I'm seeing situations where it seemed impossible. It was like the woman who was bound for 18 years and she was in that state for so long that Jesus, when he showed up, he asked what she wanted. And he says, woman, thou art loosed. After all this time, you are finally free from the thing that has held you captive. And you, some of you have been there for so long. Satan has just about got you to the place where now you are settling for not even seeing what you've always believed and prayed for. And God is saying, I am speaking to you now. I am sowing into you now. That even though you have not seen it from all these years, it shall come to pass. I need you to believe again. Come on, come on. Yeah, come on. I'm sensing I'm digging. I'm digging deep now. Digging deep into the recesses of your soul. The mind, the will, the intellect, the emotions, the imagination. I don't care how long it's been. God can now restore and put you in the position you should have always been in if you would just cooperate with him. And he says, if you can believe all things are possible to him that believe it. He says, I don't care who around you. It seems like they've been accelerating. It seems like they've been ahead of you. God is saying you need to get healed of that thing because the reason why you're stagnant is because you're regretting past mistakes, choices, and decisions. And he says, I'm healing you now. And Satan has kept you bound in your mind so that you won't move forward. God's saying, I've already given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. But he says, I need you to believe this thing now. He says there is going to be a life that is already ahead of you, a life full of joy, a life full of peace, a life full of increase. He says, now I'm going to snatch you up out of your grave. That's what I sense now. I sense the power of God to snatch you out of your grave clothes, to bring you out of that thing that you've been bound in for so long. And God's saying that this is your day. This is your day of deliverance. This is your day of freedom. Come on, come on now, come on now, come on now. The miracle working power of God is present. The miracle working power. Oh yeah, I know we've been hearing this. We've been hearing this. We've been hearing this for a long time. The miracle working power, the God of restoration. And I ain't sensed no restoration yet. That's because see right there, right there, right there. You just pinpointed where you are. It's because of that unbelief that's there. And you got to deal with that now. You got to full blown open up yourself. See, oh, come on, God. Come on, Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit just said to me, many people have stopped believing me because they don't want to open up their heart because now hope deferred makes the heart sick. And because things haven't manifested because they said they opened up their heart to me before and it didn't manifest the way they thought it was supposed to manifest. So now they're selective as to when they're going to open up their hearts to receive. And he says, the moment he says, watch this, the more you keep doing that, the longer you will stay in your place of containment because I'm the one that's going to bring you out. I'm the one that's going to cause this thing to happen. I'm going to be the one that caused this thing to work. It's almost like, don't give me any hope if you ain't going to show up and do it. God says, I've already done it. You need to believe it now. I don't care what has happened in the past. Listen, your past will not determine your future manifestation and your present manifestation of my glory. He says, if you can believe me, all things are possible to him that believe. All things are possible to him that believe. All things are possible to him that believe. All things are possible. 
all things are possible. All things. And now I got to say it like I'm saying it. God is telling me it, he's dealing with somebody strongly that has been, yep, where pregnancy is concerned. I just keep seeing this thing. He said, those children are supposed to come to pass. He said, those births are supposed to take place. And you need to go ahead and believe me. Supernatural. Legumbre frestana, lucumbre fresene namande. You are supposed to receive. Let your womb be open to receive. For some of you, it's just been a timing issue. It's a timing thing. At the right season, at the right time, that thing is going to take place. And God is saying, I had some things that I was working out to go ahead and prepare you to receive the fullness of that thing to take place in your life. And God's saying, not only from a physical child, but also that spiritual baby, that thing that I've called you to do that now has been lying dormant and that you've caused to stagnate. And now what's happening is now God is causing freedom in the lives of people. And now they're starting to move forward. And what Satan would try to do, he would try to put roadblocks in your way to make you feel as though God is not doing something. And now the minute that you begin to draw back, you will find yourself staying in that place. But watch this. Watch this. God is saying, if you will keep moving forward, you might be right there and don't realize that you are right at the place. You're about to meet the right person. You're about to see the right thing. The right door is about to open unto you. And if he says, if you can stay the course and remain consistent in giving me glory and giving me praise and speaking life without speaking death, you're about to see that thing speedily happen when you come from behind the veil, when you break forth and you come into your new season. You are already there. Some of you, one more seed away, one more thing away, one more confession away. You don't know the day or the hour, but you already know, God, I sense something in my spirit. I sense that this is a new day. I sense that this is a new time. He says, hold on to that thing. Hold on to your faith. He says, you're going to see breakthrough before you even realize it. You're going to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. And you ain't got to wait to get to heaven to see what I've already provided for you to have. Somebody type amen right there, right there, right there. Come on, 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 come on. All right, all right. Now, what's a wonder? We talked about signs, talked about miracles. What's a wonder? A wonder leaves you in awe, in admiration, wonderment, fascination, surprise, astonishment, and amazement. Man, shoot, the God of the surprise is showing up. Where there will be things where he would just say, I just did this for you to just show you how much I love you. And there will be surprises, a surprise visit, a surprise phone call, a surprise text message. Somebody might slide into your DMs, but this time it might be to restore a relationship. Something may get, is get, I'm telling you, God is starting to do some things. He is using this time of restoration to restore relationships to men's hearts, the hearts of fathers to their children, children to their fathers. The parents are now come. I'm telling you, God is doing this thing. Well, husbands and wives, he's removing every hindrance because he wants passion and bliss and intimacy and joy and peace to come in. And now you're going to have to say, I'm telling you, man, God, I can't. I'm telling you how I'm sensing how strong this thing is. The enemy has been fighting with everything he has. It has been forces behind the scene. I know some of you don't like to deal with the devil, talk about him and in that situation, because then it sounds too deep, too spooky, too spiritual for you. But there are forces at work. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus says, I am come that you might have life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. And God is saying this, the God of the surprise, who has more power, more I'm talking about the power of God is so strong, it will obliterate anything in your life. Now, watch this. I got to get back to something. I got to get back to something here. I got to get back to something here. Now, now, watch this. Let's talk about something real quick. How much time I got? I don't have that much time. But I got I to gotta, I gotta work this thing. I got to work this thing. Number one, I want to talk about Paul working miracles. Just, just giving you some, some biblical insight here. In the book of Acts 19, 11 through 12, the Bible says, And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. See, this, this is God's ability coming upon tangible. See, the anointing is transferable. And so Paul began, just like this, I have this rag in my hand. 
he released the anointing in a cloth. And then when that cloth was put on people, the evil spirits attached to them were now driven out of them. That's a miracle. That's something out of the ordinary. You wash your face with stuff like this every day. He says, okay, handkerchiefs. You know, people blow their nose in handkerchiefs, wipe off sweat with handkerchiefs, wipe things up with handkerchiefs. He says this, I'm going to take something that seems common to man, put my anointing on it and cause a miracle to take place. Man, you just, man, some of y'all just missed that one there. You got to catch that. God is going to take what's common to you, put his anointing on it, and it's going to cause a freedom and deliverance. I don't, you got to take that for what it means for you. What is he saying to you? What's the common thing? What's the thing that you didn't even think about God was about to use to bring you into your new season, to bring you into your wealthy place, to bring you into your place of freedom and deliverance. The thing that you've just been overlooking and that's common, he will say this time, take another look at it and my anointing will come upon you and it'll come upon that thing to put you in a new position in life. Number two, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead in the book of John 11. Listen, <laughs> Lazarus is dead. Jesus takes four days to get there. <laughs> Man, the people were crying out. The sister says, if you would have been here, he wouldn't have died. Jesus makes the statement, he ain't a dead but asleep. They're like, what you talking about? Then they, they, they're trying to figure out what Jesus is saying. Then he just bluntly says, okay, Lazarus is dead. He says this. He did it intentionally. <laughs> Man, Jesus is cold-blooded. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. He is, he's so confident. He's like, listen, I'm the resurrection and the life. No matter, watch this. This is what the Spirit of God gave to me and I saw it. There is no cap on the length of time. Oh, let me say it this way. Okay, okay, okay. I'm trying, it's so much running through my head. So much running through my head. I don't care how long a thing has been dead for you. Jesus says I can resurrect it. He said, Lazarus, watch this, come forth. La he says, he told him to roll away the tomb. First of all, the stone away. He said, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus came out bound with the rags that they wrapped him in for the burial. But then Jesus said this, Lazarus was already alive. Shoot, shoot, boy, what you get ready to say here? Lazarus was already alive, but he was still bound. He was already alive, but he was still wrapped up. He was already alive but he needed to be loosed. When you receive Jesus, you are already made alive, but there's still some things in your life that have kept you bound. Jesus made this statement, loose them and let them go. What he's saying to you now, you are already alive in Christ. You already have my nature in you. You are already free. He says, now watch this. He has already declared, loose them and let them go. When they receive me, they receive my spirit. When they receive me, they receive my nature. When they receive me, they receive their freedom. Now I need to let them know where they already are, who they already are, what is already taking place. And now you got to believe it. So I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you have already been loosed by the Spirit of God. You are already free from the snare of the enemy. You are, no, -uh, you better hear me. Well, why am I still dealing with it if I'm already free? You just need to believe what is already taking place. It's been in your mind, and God is saying, I'm bringing you out head first today. I'm bringing you out in your mindset. I'm bringing you out in your mentality. You are free. And whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Come on, come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. I, I, I want to read some other stuff. I may have to pick this up next week. I may have to pick this up next week. 
Yeah. I'm going to deal with this last point here. And I'm going to pick this up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you some ways. And this, this will be good. I'm, I'm, God is setting this thing up. <laughs> God, he said this also. God wants to use, and he wants us to use, his power to override natural laws. He wants us to use his power to override natural laws. In the book of Luke 8, 22 through 25, there was a storm that arose. I'm going to go there. We, we always read this account. And sometimes we read it so much, we've taken it for granted. Sometimes if you don't watch it, you can become numb in hearing things just because you're familiar with it. And I want you to come out of that familiarity right now and to see something that maybe you hadn't seen before. You got always got to look at scripture with a fresh set of eyes, a new vantage point. Verses 22 through 25. Um, now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples and he said unto them, let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep and there came down a storm of wind on the lake and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water and they ceased and they were and there was a calm. And he said unto them, where is your faith? And that's the question that God is asking us now. Where is your faith? Where is it? Where is it? Is it a question of do you have any? Or is it a question of where is it located? You got faith here, but not faith here. You got faith to save you, but you don't have faith to transform you. You got faith to save you from hell, but you don't have faith to see the healing manifest. You got faith for this but don't have faith for that. Where is your faith? Have you not seen me do these things? Have you not seen me feed the 5,000? Have you not, let me bring it closer to home. Have you not seen me do things in your life? Has not, there not been times where you prayed and seen those prayers come to pass? Did I, did I not give you a word and it was right on it? So how come you believe that word but won't believe this one? Have I not shown myself to be God in your life? Have you not experienced my power and presence? And now every time something comes contradictory to what I told you, the smallest thing that comes up, you buckle down, you begin to cry, you begin to weep. You think that it ain't going to work. He says, where is your faith? And they being, watch this, and they being afraid wondered, saying one to another, what manner of man is this? For he commanded even the winds and the water, and they obey him. And they being afraid wondered. Whoa, I never saw this before. Because of their fear, they couldn't see. They couldn't understand because they were still afraid. And out of their fear, they begin to question, ask questions, begin to speak. You got to, okay, come on, come on, help me break this down, Holy Ghost. Sometimes you got to deal with that fear first so that it opens up your eyes to see who you truly are. You got to realize, and the way you deal with fear is you come with the word of God. For in 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The Amplified says discipline and self-control. So he is not giving us this fear. It's false evidence appearing real. See, Satan will try to come and make you think that what God said in his word will not come to pass. And I'm here to tell you that it will come to pass if you can believe him for it. The will of God is not automatic. We have to cooperate with him. We have to believe, and now our corresponding actions will have to align with what we're saying we believe. 
if you believe that God said you're going to be successful at that thing, that means you need to get started with it. And every time, oh, she cumbra fresco. Okay, okay, Lord. Okay, Lord. Okay. Sometimes this answers the question, why is it that when a person starts moving forward in something that they begin to draw back? The spirit of containment is trying to hold them captive. That spiritual force is trying to bring everything against you to make you feel like, because it's almost like the minute you're about to, it's almost like this, you're afraid of the success. Because watch this, you realize in order to live at another level or to receive at another level, you have to live at another level. And to live at another level means you have to completely transform how you're currently living. And we are he, creatures of habit. If that means you can't watch as much TV as you want to because you got to spend more time studying, you got to spend more time researching because you're in love with the leisure of laziness. That you're saying now, I'm not willing to sacrifice my pleasure of laziness and doing nothing to now take on everything that God, because successful people are not lazy people. Successful people don't waste time. So you can't keep living the way that you're living and expect to put on something new. Okay. Oh, gee. He said, he's saying, what are you willing to do now? Because it's intentional. He says, I've given you the ability. I've given you authority over all the power of the enemy. I've given you, I've given you. So if I gave it to you, you have control over it. Come on, come on. So if you have control over it, you can transform it whenever you're ready. <laughs> whenever you're ready to come out, you can come out because you already been free. The door has already been opened. The table has already been spread. Whenever you're ready to move, my power is available. Whenever you're ready to perform a miracle, my power is available. Whenever you're ready to lay hands on the sick, that's when you will see them recover. Whenever you're ready to open up your mouth and speak, that's when you'll see a demonstration of my glory. He said, it's up to you now. I place before you life and death, blessings and curse. Choose life. Choose life. That addiction is not more powerful than the person of the Holy Spirit. That thing is not more powerful than my word sown in your heart, spoken out your mouth to produce the increase. There is nothing too hard for you. Listen, I don't care what law has been put in place. He says, I will begin to transform the hearts of men to transform laws if my church will speak up. God is saying, I want you just like Peter in the book of Matthew 14. Peter saw Jesus walking on water. And what many people are saying, I know, but that's Jesus. I know, but that's pastor so-and-so. I know, because that's prophet so-and-so. I know, but it's that person. But all, watch this. Peter saw, he, uh, listen, all he needed to do was to see someone else walking in it. He saw Jesus walking on water. And something in him, I don't know what it was, said, Lord, wait a minute, if it be thou. And that's what some of you are saying. Lord, if it be thou, I know what I'm hearing, but I need to know, is it you? He says, if it be thou, bid me to walk on the water. All Jesus said was, it is I, come. And on that word come, Peter stepped out the boat, stepped into a miracle, stepped into the supernatural, walked on the word that Jesus spoke. Come on, come on, come on. 
He walked out on the word. He had that one word from God can transform you. That one word from God can sustain you. But watch this. The winds and the sea begin to grow. Distraction came. I'm going to deal with this next week. Distractions came. And it, it came to draw Peter's attention away from the word that Jesus spoke. And the minute he got his eyes off Jesus and on the situation, he began to sink. Jesus is telling you, don't listen to what everything else and everybody else saying. Don't listen to the distracting voices and forces. Stay focused on me and you will walk on water. Stay focused on me and that thing will turn around. Stay focused on me and you'll see the supernatural. Jesus is saying, I have been trying to show you signs and wonders. And this is a season where you're going to see my manifested power and presence like you have never seen it before. If you can stay focused on me. That's why this is a year of restoration. This is a year of refocusing. And that last year, God gave you your time to rest. He says, now is your time to get up and to run with the horses, to run with the eagles and to fly like you've never flown before. This is my time. This is my season. And this is yours. Thus saith the Lord. My name is Mike May and I approve this doggone message. It's your time. It's your season. And that settles it. Stop telling me what's going wrong. Stop believing for what's going to start working right. I, I don't shut up answering people who come to me with problems all the time. You got the answer. Speak life. Speak life. Speak life. Listen, I'm not one. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Stop looking for people that's going to wallow with you in pity party. You need people that's going to speak life to you. That's going to speak strength to you. That's going to speak the word to you. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop hanging around people that feed your flesh. Yeah. Stop hanging around people that feed your insecurities, that feed your doubts, unbelief, that feeds a negative mindset that opposes God's word. And you're going to walk in the supernatural. You running with the eagle. You, 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 you flying with the eagles. You running with the horses. Listen, we don't, we don't play here. We don't die. We multiply. Hey, hey, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I prophesy to you. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. All is well with you and your household. <laughs> glory to God. All is well with you and your household. I, hey, shake on it. I heard that. I command. I command women's menstrual cycles to be regulated properly. I just heard that. I command it now. In the name, I command the cramp in the seas. In Jesus' name. Ooh, Shebrana, Breno, Shotono. Don't you know that pain and childbirth was part of the curse? Oh, okay, see, I know I'm about to hit you with something. In the beginning, it was never to be so. That was part of Adam and Eve's punishment for what took place. But Jesus redeemed man from the curse of what was implemented then. See, some of you ain't never heard that before. You just accepted certain things. Because if you accept it, you will never push against it. And you will keep allowing it. When you see things that are taking place in your body that are not designed to be there, you have the authority to speak over your body and command it to line up. I ain't going to stop preaching. You see, some of y'all don't want to receive it because it's a man saying it. Now, if my wife came up and preached it, for some of you ladies, you'll receive it better. Well, you're a man. You don't know what, it, what it's like. See? you missing the point. God said it in his word. Y'all better start receiving this stuff, boy. I'm telling you. Because it's flowing. And see, and this is what I'm telling you. If you don't receive, the wisdom will shut up from flowing in your direction. That's what happens. And we're going to be open. We want everything that God has promised us. The promises of God are yes and amen. What time am I working? Okay, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done right now. 
But when I get into this thing next week, Lord Jesus. Jesus says, I'm the resurrection and the life. I'm going to talk, boy, I'm going to show you that you already been delivered and set free. And we're going to get into the word of God. And God is telling, man, sow this word, sow this word in season and out of season. I got so stirred up that when you know the truth, the truth will make you free. You shall know the truth, become intimate with it. It'll make you free. What do you mean? You can get to the point where you're so busy sowing and confessing the word in your heart that it will produce freedom where you didn't even have to rebuke the thing. It instantly left you. Because you were swimming in the, okay, let me, let me, let me, shoot. Man, I'm about to, man, shoot. Whoo! Hallelujah. All right, every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. Shake home, my little bitch, she come. Surely, by the bullshit that in the day. Surely, goodness and mercy. Come on, come on. Some of you listen. I got, no, I can't. Some of you listening. God is dealing with you. I, I, man, I, I could sense the stuff that some of y'all are dealing with. I can sense the power and the weight of it. Some of y'all been dealing not with some small time imps or little demon spirits, but some of you have dealt with some heavy things. And I can tell a lot of times by the weight of the power that's resting on me to deal with certain things. But some are just so frivolous it's the small foxes, the Bible says, that destroy the vine. And you're letting a mindset stop you from receiving the fullness. It's like in relationships, you're so busy trying to prove yourself right that you're forfeiting your peace. And you got to stop that. What time is, what time is, what, 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 let me see, what, huh? Okay, all right, all right, all right, I'm going to stop. Because mm. I feel a flow, a sense of flow. I can tell y'all pulling. Somebody that's out there pulling. They're pulling. It's like if you, if you map out things. Some of you is organization that's been, con lack of organization that's been containing you. Because you have no structure in your life. That's why you haven't exploded out. If you would just plan and then go by the plan step by step that God gives you and that you generate, you will see forward momentum and progress take place. And as you begin to go through each step, your momentum will begin to carry you and begin to increase and it'll start. And before you know it, an acceleration has taken place because you just started you'll find yourself so locked into the process that now all of a sudden now, boom, before you know it, you're in the promise. But you got to start. Number one is strategize. God has placed it in his word. Write the vision, make it plain so that those that read it can run with it. It's not just for others to read it, but it's for the person that the vision came through to help keep you focused on what you need to do. If you remain focused and step by step, you have less time for distraction and less time for depression because your energy is so busy on completing what you're supposed to be doing, you ain't got time to be attacked by the devil. Okay, he'll come with temptation, but you so busy, you won't even fall into in the temptation. The reason why you fall into so much temptation is because you got too many gaps in your time and your time is too idle. If you will stay busy for him, you ain't got time to go to that thing again. Okay, that's it. Somebody need to hear that. So, Father, we thank you. Whew. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor. Hallelujah. There may be somebody that's never made Jesus the Lord of their life. But you need to today. Okay. If you want to get born again, then I want you to contact us 
and we'll lead you into the prayer of salvation. God is just telling me something different. It's like, you don't have to pray that right now because the people who are listening are already saved. I'm speaking to other people right now. I'm speaking to them. I would have just done that out of habit. But we will we'll just, if you want to get born again, then you can contact us. You can, you can you send a message to us, and we'll have somebody to pray with you how to obtain and maintain what you came to receive. I sense this, this, this anointing that, that was flowing. If you want to get connected with this ministry, if you want to join, become a partner or supporter of this ministry, contact us. We'll let you know how to obtain and maintain that as well. If you need a place to submit to and, and be connected with, you say, hey, I don't have a church home, but I want one. Contact us. Let us know. We'll reach out to you and let you know how to make that possible. At this time, we're going to honor God in our giving as well. So all of the information is coming up on your screen, how to sow. Listen, do what the Lord tells you to do. There is something that is happening, folks. There is something that's taking place. I'm at a different place now in my life. I'm at a greater place. This anointing is flowing in a different way, in a stronger manifestation. And I'm expecting it to grow and to grow and to grow. I'm expecting signs, wonders, and miracles to take place in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Some of you trying to figure out how to get out of bad situations. The Spirit of God is going to assist you, help you in legal matters, to come out of what you bad decisions and choices that you made in the past, and you're still dealing with the ramifications of them now. The Holy Ghost is going to help you. God says, I'm your in vitro fertilization. Yeah, it was in vitro fertilization. Yeah. He says, that's, I'm that. I'm going, uh, yeah. I just heard that statement. I just heard that statement. I'm sowing into your spirit, your womb now, says the spirit of God. There's something that's been real strong with this with me, with babies lately. And pregnancies for people. And I almost hesitate because I know different people in different situations, but I got to say what the Holy Ghost telling me to say. He says, I need you to speak it because I need faith to come. And I want to show my power in their lives. And I want to show them that I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am their God. I am their father. And I am so concerned with the thoughts of, yeah, the, the things that bother, yeah, you said you'll perfect everything that concerns us. He's so, he's so, he wants to be so involved in the things that concern you. And this, this is based out of his love for you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. This is your springing forth. March was declared as a month of the pivot. April is declared as a month of the harvest and the coming forth, the springing forth. Expect your new season. Expect new day. Expect transformation coming your way. Expect. And what's on the outside will begin to align what's changing and transforming on the inside. And God says, I'm bringing you up higher. In Jesus' name. Friends, that's what I have for you today. Hmm. Mm. The power is present to heal, to restore, to set free. And I pray that God strengthens you for the turnaround. Supernatural turnarounds, miraculous breakthroughs 
in the midst of great impossibilities. God bless you all. May the grace and peace of God be upon you all. May heaven shine on you and your household this day. In the name of Jesus, let everything that you desire be in alignment with his word and his will for your life. Grace and peace unto you, folks. This is Pastor Mike with Spirit of Fire Fellowship. Where we're changing the culture, igniting a passion, living a dream. God bless you all. I love you. See you next time. Peace.